now for Ask the Surgeon. Brought to you by Everett Bone & Joint. Everett Bone & Joint, the best choice to get you back in the game. Learn more at EverettBoneAndJoint.com. All right, welcome back to Health Matters. It's Ask the Surgeon. Our guest, Dr. Jeff Mason, orthopedic physician. For Everett Bone & Joint, Shannon lets me ask a question occasionally. Here it is. Here's my big question. <laughs> What is patella dislocation? Is it patella or patellar? It's patella. Okay. It's when you dislocate your kneecap. Oh, really? The is patella, that, that is? The patella is the kneecap, and it can get dislocated with certain types of injuries. Well, let's let's talk about That's a good question, Maury. Uh, you we, know what? Don't patronize me. <laughs> you got to yeah, go and Patronize or patronize? I think it's patronize, Whatever. but okay. that's okay. Yeah, okay, that's another Hey, thing. here's the deal, though. Let's talk about the anatomy of the knee and why the kneecap or what we call the patella is so important, Jeff. Well, the kneecap is there to improve the force of the muscles in your thigh in extending your leg and making your knee work. Uh, without the kneecap, uh, the force would be much less and you'd feel weak even walking down the hall or especially going up and down stairs. So the kneecap, essentially from a, a, a physics standpoint, if we want to talk about physics, uh, it acts as a fulcrum. Yes. And it, it, so it gives mechanical strength efficiencies to the quadricep muscles. Yes, increases the lever arm if you're right. a physicist. Right. Good job. Good job. So, <laughs> so now if you didn't have a kneecap, if someone was to take that kneecap out, your quads or your thigh muscles would become really weak. Yeah, you'd have to work a lot harder, even 30 or 40 percent harder for certain positions. And are there people that don't have kneecaps? Yeah, there occasionally uh, you can lose your kneecap if you have some horrendous injury and it has to be removed and it can't be repaired. Okay. Well, I mean, you're... I, I was just feeling my fake kneecap yeah, you right want to now. Make sure I, I, you're... Feel, I do have a fake kneecap, don't I? <laughs> yeah, okay. You probably have a fake kneecap. Okay. Yeah, but years ago, I mean, not to get off the subject too much, but if the kneecap was arthritic and really problematic, they removed them. They did, yeah. and uh, it was often a bad idea. Right, exactly. So, the, again, we're talking about the patella, and it's extremely important for mechanical efficiency of the knee. This, this, what happens... You said the kneecap pops out, but what, what, what's going on there? Well, it's usually a twisting injury, and you can get a variable story from the patient of maybe uh, some sort of contact, either another knee or in a tackle situation with a shoulder or a helmet can help push it out. Uh, so it can be either a contact or non-contact injury. And, and so it, there are times where the kneecap is, is there, it can actually pop out and pops back in. There's other times where it pops out and stays out. And these are the folks that you're probably going to see like in the emergency room or. Yes. It's easy to put it back in, at least easy for us. Yeah. But uh, it, it still reflects a severity of injury that you don't really like to see. And so, I mean, are these folks that have experiences, are they in extreme pain? And Normally, yes. Yeah. So they're going to be really, really uh, kind of anxious and. You know, and if you're out of your kids' sporting activity and all of a sudden you see a kid like slide into second base and grabs his knee and you go out there, what are you going to see in this in this type of injury? Well, it's actually very obvious because the, the kneecap is so prominent in the front of the knee and if it's not there and it's sitting off to the side, it's a very easy diagnosis to make. Is this happen, does this happen a lot in young kids or older kids? Or it, it, happens, no it happens more often in young people and we suspect that most people who dislocate their kneecap have this or that thing about the way they're built that sets them up for it. Is there a time period um, where kids are growing and, you know, all of a sudden these kids, you know, you see them, you know, they go home for summer, summer vacation, they come back and they put on four inches of height. Is there a time where they're, like, unstable? Usually it's not associated with the growth uh, spur. Usually it's associated with the angles in their hips and their femur, you know, the thigh bone and all that. So it's something that they've been sort of trending toward for a while, even if no one's aware of it. Okay, so if, if, if you're at a situation or an event, athletic activity, whatever, and someone does have a dislocated kneecap, um, they tend to pop back in, is that right? They're easy, they're easy to get back in. How, well, how, what should you do if they're, you're on the field and that kneecap, you, it's obvious that the kneecap's out, what should, what should a person do? You flex the hip up, so the hip, is the, the hip bone, so the, uh, the thigh's pointing up in the air a little bit, and then you simply extend the knee, straighten the knee, and gently push it back in, and it'll go back in easily. And these folks are probably pretty relieved when it pops back in. Yeah, it feels a lot better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So pretty relieved or very relieved. <laughs> very relieved. Very, now, yeah. now was, is there a chance of this dislocating if this happens once? Will it happen a lot? That's actually the big question. What, I, what how commonly do they re-dislocate? Does something need to be done? And there's a lot of discussion about that even now in orthopedic surgery. Is there is it gender specific? I mean, do you see this more uh, female, males, anything like that? You actually see it more in females, but 
um, it's more boys who have something going on that needs to be reconstructed. Okay. okay. Well, this is great. We're going to come back. We're going to we're going to take a quick break, and we're going to come back and uh, talk to Dr. Mason, and then we're going to talk to uh, one of your patients, right? Phil. Okay. Phil is a young man who just experienced this, and we want to get him on the air and uh, get the get the real experience here. Just to know if he's he was relieved when they when or they very back relieved, or very, yeah, very relieved. relieved. Yeah. You're listening to Health Matters on Fox Sports 1380. Welcome back. Um, this is part two of the Ask the Surgeon segment with Dr. Jeff Mason from Everbone and Joint. When you go to the doc, when you go to the doctor's office, what what do you expect? What kind of uh, what kind of treatment do they give you? Well, we'll, the we'll certainly get an X-ray first because we want to see if the patella is riding in that groove the way we want it to be. I mean, we know it's generally there just from a glance, but we want to have a good picture of if it's still sitting off to the side a bit, indicating that some of those soft tissues that hold it in place, whether or not they're disrupted. Mm -hmm. Well, so the, people need to understand that the patella is designed to sit in a groove and it rides up and down. So when you bend and straighten your leg, the kneecap is actually, I kind of describe it as kind of the bobsled and the bobsled run. That's exactly right. And it, so it, it goes up and down in that groove at the end of your thigh bone and if the structures that hold it there are damaged, then all of a sudden it will have more of a tendency to slide out again. So you guys are going to do an x-ray, and, and not only an x-ray, but in today's world, you're probably going to do a further diagnostic test? It's very, yeah, sorry. I want to see Phil. Are you with us? Yeah. Okay. Hey, Phil, how you doing? Shannon O'Kelly here. Hey, good. And this is Maury, and, and also with us is Dr. Jeff Mason from Everbone and Joint. So, Phil, right. you, you doing all right? How's that knee feeling? Yeah, it's doing good. It's doing good. Excellent. So thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, you know, Dr. Mason's here. We're talking about patella dislocations. And you recently had a dislocation of your kneecap about eight, eight to nine weeks ago. Is that right? Yeah. I was playing basketball and it just popped out of its socket. So, I mean, Dr. Mason was talking about how most patients are usually planted and twisting. Is that kind of how you did it? Yeah, there was no contact. I just, yeah, I just, it was just non-contact, twisted, and yeah, the patella went out of socket. So uh, Dr. Mason's on, on the air with us right now, so he might jump in and ask a question, but we're just going to kind of, we, we want to find out how it felt and what, 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 what you experienced. And uh, so did you see a physician right away? Did you know it was dislocated? I mean, you know, how painful? Yeah. Well, I, yeah, when it happened, I just fell on the ground. My knee was bent, and I looked at it, and uh, the kneecap was just out of, out of place. So I thought it was pretty weird, so I just, we just <laughs> called them. Uh, yeah. That was your first thing that went through your head is that it was really weird, huh? Yeah, and it hurt really bad. Okay. Did you get a did did you get a picture so you put that on Facebook or anything? Uh no, I don't no, I just I have a picture and I put it on my background for my phone. <laughs> <laughs> of course. So, yeah. so you you guys called you were at you were at a, a gym, a local gym and then you called nine one one, is that right? Yeah, and they just came right away. And then uh then we had a doctor in the area, he came in, uh, just relocated, straightened out my knee, and it went back in socket. So it popped back in, and Dr. Jeff Mason just told us a few minutes ago how, how good that must have felt for you when yeah. you popped that kneecap back in. So, Doc, again, when this happens, there's there's no surgery or anything, right? Well, the, you know, the time will tell. I mean, right yeah. now he needs to rehabilitate the knee and see how it behaves. So have you been playing basketball since, or you can't? Uh, I can play about 50 percent, 75 percent with no contact, and I. And I that's still, play. and that's pretty much still better than anybody else, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. That's what I thought. Well, yeah. Phil, Phil, um, you know, just right when it happened, I mean, your biggest problem was you couldn't get your your quadricep muscles to work, and you had a bunch of swelling. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, I couldn't even flex them, and they would just they're just floppy and stuff. So then I came into physical therapy, and you guys. Uh, shocked it and it. Went yeah, back. Shocked it. <laughs> now, how, did, how did you shock? Yeah, it? we we used electrical stim. That's right, Phil. We shocked you. Um, yeah. Electrical stim, and our, our goal at that point in time is to decrease the inflammation. Because right, Je Jeff. I mean, the inflammation. These knee. Yeah, caps. there's usually a, a lot of extra fluid in the knee when this happens, and you're trying to get your body to reabsorb that as, as rapidly as possible. So, what is going on there, uh, Jeff? That the 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 knee becomes so inflamed when these things dislocate. Well, among other things, there's usually bleeding because you tear this or that structure, and you may knock a piece of cartilage off, and so the knee gets full of blood pretty quickly, which not only hurts but makes it swell up right and so you were pretty you remember phil you're pretty tender around your kneecap 
Yeah, yeah, it was puffed up pretty big. So you had to you had to work on a lot of you modified your activity so you stopped uh, jumping around and climbing stairs and things like that. You were in a brace. Uh, remember that uh, long leg brace you were in? Yeah, yeah. How long do you, this is a question for uh, Jeff, Dr. Mason here, how long do you put them in those braces? You, usually a brace like that, I'll just leave them in for at the most a couple of weeks, sometimes even less, depending on physical examination, and then move along later to a patellar sleeve or something that we think is a little more specific. That's kind, of, that, that, that's kind of your course, wasn't it, Phil? You were in that, that brace kind of mobilized or stopped the movement of your yeah. knee. And yeah, then I was you, in that for three weeks, and then I got into the patellar sleeve. And you worked a lot of ice at home. Yeah, about... Five times, six times a day. Yeah, and so nine weeks later, you're kind of moving much better. You are kind of returned to activity a little bit, playing a little basketball. Uh, are, are you are you still kind of worried about the kneecap? Are you anxious about running and jumping on it? Uh, yeah, I mean, well, since I haven't been playing on it that much, it feels. I mean, it feels a little weird. I just don't want it to go back out. But uh, yeah, I'm anxious to get back and jump and stuff. So there are exercises that he can do that will stop this from happening again. You know what I mean? I've, is well, there, what you try to do is, yeah, yeah, yeah you, you try to, what we try to do is we're trying to build up the quadricep muscles, the quad muscles, your thigh muscles, actually control the kneecap the way it tracks up and down. And like Dr. Mason said, a lot of it is anatomical, but the most important thing that we can do is build his muscles up, get his proprioception or his balance and the way his muscles fire back up to speed, control the inflammation, decrease the pain, and then return him to activity. Sport-specific training is what we try to do. Mm. And, I mean, this, I've got a question here, Phil, for Dr. Mason. What is your return to play expectations for, I mean, here we have Phil, 16-year-old. He wants to get back to basketball. He's nine weeks out. He's doing great, by the way. I mean, Phil has done really good in his rehab. So return to play expectations from a physician standpoint. Well, the first thing is if he dislocated for the first time at 16, that's a better prognosis than if he'd done it when he was 12 or 13 or 14 or something like that. There's a, so there's a greater chance that it will not recur. Um, but mostly what you do is you increase his activity gradually. And, and you know, in another, it's been nine weeks now or so, in another four to six weeks, you say, well, start playing harder. Start doing some cutting, more jumping, more running, and see how it behaves. So there's about a window of about, you know, you're talking about three to four months. Correct. Kind of window time frame. So, I mean, um, in your experience as, as a physician and seeing, how, how many of these you see, I mean, guessing, would you see in a year? Um, we see lots of patellar type problems, but dislocations, we only see a handful a year. It's not an extremely common thing. It's a constant trickle. Yeah. See, Phil, you see how unique you are? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you have any questions, Phil? Uh, no, no, not really. So things, <laughs> so things are you going to... You're gonna you're gonna send that backdrop to everybody. So when you, I just got to ask you, when you look down at that kneecap after that happened, I mean, um, it, there was a big hole in your where your kneecap is, and that kneecap you could obviously tell was off to the side. Yeah, definitely, it was way off there. So it, I'd like just, I'd like Phil to um, go to the IRG Facebook page and post it on there <laughs> so everybody <laughs> can see it. <laughs> can you do that? Uh, yeah, probably. Okay, yeah. good. That's good to know. Yeah. So um. You know, Phil, uh, you're doing great, so you're, you're working on your exercise. A big part of getting better for a lot of patients is actually that home program. And Phil has been really consistent. I want to say he's really been working hard and stuff like that. He's making some great progress. So he's, he's a basketball player, and we're going to have him back out on the court. Any, any parting words or anything, uh, Dr. Mason, anything? You can't Not make that muscle too strong. Yeah, exactly. Got to get Not stronger. It. Yeah, no, I'm just saying... Uh, Physical therapy's been working good, and I love the, I love your shop. I like it, Shane. Thanks, Phil. Appreciate it. Yeah. So, yeah. I owe you. Okay. <laughs> All right. Phil, right. take care. Thanks. Thanks, Phil. Yeah. Appreciate take it. See you later. Yes. Yeah. All right. That was Phil. So, I mean, I, is it, when would you guys, um, you guys, you orthopedist, or guy, or you guys, as we like to call you <laughs> in the biz, <laughs> we answer to that too. Yeah. You <laughs> guys. When would you folks? Uh, Consider doing. Is there a surgery for this? Or? Yeah, there are a couple different operations for this. Um, there's one structure that supports the kneecap that's often torn in uh, this injury, and you have to decide whether or not you need to re reconstruct it or repair it. And you would do that based simply on how it behaves. If he dislocates again, you'd say, well, something needs to be done here. Now, is this the, you know, this big sports injury is like they tear the patella tendon? Is that kind of what 
any part of this, or am I? Well, that, that's a that that's something, that's something different. Okay. Well, I think you, the, the structure you're talking about is there's tissue on the inside and outside of the knee, the retinaculum. Is that what we're talking about? Yes, it's actually called the median patellofemoral ligament, and it's within the retinaculum. I was going to say that. Just circle C <laughs> on every test. Just circle C. That's right. <laughs> so, so we got to we, we, so basically C, for those folks out listening, you've got connective tissue on the inside, outside of your knee that helps hold that kneecap in that that groove exactly and if this dislocates you might tear that tissue and you guys go and repair that if we have to yes you have to. do you just suture it back together or are you grafting it or well some people simply suture it other people are doing reconstructions of the ligament because they say oh if you, if you just suture it you're not really solving the problem and that's a matter of debate yeah interesting how many times as a physician orthopedic physician um, would you let a patient continue to dislocate and recur recurrence i guess would you I mean, I know that's a tough question, but... For someone who's young and athletic and wants to stay that way, if they had one recurrence, I would fix them. Really? Probably. It's, it's, it's just because at this point, the pattern has been set, and you know the structure is damaged. And just as he said the first time, it didn't seem like a dramatic injury that made it come out. So do so you think um, it, it basically, in, in essence, what they're doing is they're just stretching that tissue out, and it just lacks the stability, and you have to go in and kind of restabilize and give it some help? Yes, Wow. Okay. So that sounds pretty painful. Sounds pretty painful. But uh, the, there's a lot of these kids that get back to sports and do fine without surgery, though, right? Yeah, plenty of them do. It, it's sort of a flip of the coin when it first happens. Okay. When when, is the, when would you know, though? You know what I mean? Well, you always give them a good try. Uh -huh. be, be you know such as such as this young man. He's rehabilitating. He's feeling strong. He's already engaging in significant activities. So it looks pretty promising right now. Yeah, it, yeah, he's doing he's doing good. Cool. I mean, you know, a lot of times with patients, as you progress them in rehab, they just have some lack of confidence. You can just see it when they do activity. I mean, he's very confident. He's not having any kind of instability. I mean, some people actually pop their kneecap out and it just pops in. I mean, there's sometimes it might pop out and just come back in. You don't even know it. Oh yeah, there are people who are very unstable, and sometimes their activity level level or lifestyle is such that it's just not much of a problem, at least not in the shorter intermediate term. Right, it's the, the high volume of activity people that are you concerned about. Are, they, are there weight lifting? Is this is Phil lifting weights with his legs? Well, he's yet? doing. Is he, he there yet? Or? He's doing some some weight training of his quad and his hamstring and lower leg muscles. Um, mostly, we're working on a lot of balance with him. Mm -hmm. What we call proprioception. So just balance, changing direction, some mild agility. But primarily with these folks early on, you just try to control the inflammation because, like Dr. Mason said, this knee is huge when it comes in. It's just puffy. There's so much trauma in there. There's this fluid in the joint. We got to get rid of that fluid. Before we move them on too fast. Wow. Okay. Good stuff. As always, you learn a lot from the Ask the Surgeon segment. And I always like it. It's, it's, it's one of my favorite segments, too. Besides, everything's just talking to you. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> and I just want to say that all this that we covered is going to be on the test. So I hope everybody was paying attention. Thanks to Dr. Mason. Dr. Mason from Everbone's Thank Thanks you very for having much. Me. Come back anytime. And Phil, thank you very much. I know you're listening. He was a great guest, too.